Hey, glad to be back from an epic summer break. I passed my first year of university and having a great laugh with mates. Met Richard Dawkins and Polly Higgins at the Humanist Conference and I bought Jesus for one penny on eBay. I feel I have almost recovered from Sean's stupidity and retarded questions. Two of them were, why is the destruction of humanity worse than its survival? and why are the human rights necessary for a society to develop? Which was the equivalent of asking why is it necessary to wipe your own ass? This was where I unfortunately made the assumption that Shaw would know. However, it appears that he clearly didn't. You said that you had cancer. Cancer is, in one sense or another, living cells. Yeah. And so, why is eliminating cancer morally better than allowing it to thrive? Why do human beings have more... Christ, it was like I had the spoon feed in throughout the entire debate, like a freaking child. Because he clearly missed the question that we both had to answer. What would make a more productive and moral society? But I suspect he was using a tactic Kentoven's daughter referred to as being... I am intentionally being kept ignorant. I don't know okay. the whereabouts. I cannot do what you're asking. Sean used this tactic in the Magic Sandwich show as well, and it ended up with him failing in that debate too. So it appears Sean clearly doesn't learn from his mistakes. But in this video, I would like to focus on the topic concerning why we should worry about our ethics. I'm afraid this topic stemmed from a discussion I had with Sean through personal messages, which I will show later on in the video. To begin with, let's define what ethics are. Ethics is the scientific study of moral standards and principles by how they affect conduct, meaning an assessment of the actions used in a situation and their impact upon people. It is recorded how Aristotle developed the first model of ethics through his research in Athens, Greece. He placed emphasis on how ethics can play a significant role in leadership. These can range from the impact on the individual to the society. As described by Mark Anderson, a leader must establish their vision for future goals with their team, how they must ascertain a way to achieve these goals through an effective strategy which can shape their path to achieve their targets. Finally, they must verify what the most important activities are in order to achieve their set goals. So, in a nutshell, for example, a political leader must make sure the team is aware of their vision, strategy and priorities. The vision describes how the leader has researched and identified problems people are facing and how to overcome them. For example, problems like poverty, crime, disease, racism and more. The strategy explains how the team can overcome the identified problem and what they can do in an, in an attempt to help the people who are suffering. For example, the National Health Service has a number of facilities which have developed throughout its time through research, collaboration, commitment and hard work. The strategy demonstrates guidelines to help the team to achieve their goals under a strict line of principles, with re rewards for accomplishments and negative sanctions for those who break them. I think a simple reference to the study performed by Albert Bandura on social conditioning can support this point. The priorities demonstrate a focus and explain how the team can identify which tasks are most or least important. For example, the NHS are going to prioritize a patient suffering from cancer more than a person who has a cold due to the fact that a cancer patient is more likely to die and suffer more than a person with a cold. So more funding would be put into the researching how to treat and destroy cancer rather than the common cold. Sun Tzu describes how we must confront the chaos of life with discipline, and this is exactly what the discipline of science and secular humanists propose to solve problems and govern societies. Their dynamic models have contributed to achieving the ultimate goals by promoting all aspects of life, such as an individual's holistic welfare and intellect, to utilize their full potential. 
Through an effective model of education, it can teach young people how to think rather than what to think so they can search and investigate answers and come to conclusions for themselves. This way they can understand the explanation and appreciate the work put into research by others. By observing and experiencing the bigger picture of life, they can search and investigate specific parts of it. For example, when we look at the human body, we can use an electron microscope to under understand a deeper insight of the biological, chemical and physical components which contribute to the overall mechanism of our survival. By comparison to Sean's collection of statements due to his dysfunctional behaviour where he fails to listen during our debate, I think we can conclude how he and no doubt any other creationist on YouTube will ever become an effective leader, considering how he and every other creationist have failed to acknowledge any of these characteristics they needed to support their proposed mechanisms to solve problems. Their visions only represent something they can never know anything about. For example, Sean failed to explain how he knew heaven even existed. Their methods are inconsistent, self-contradictory and blind. Creationists have never been able to explain or devise a method they could apply to achieve their goals. For example, a number of religions have proposed almost exactly the same kind of ideology and has accomplished nothing. The creationists I have encountered prioritize their faith above and beyond the needs of everyone. I don't think I could get a better example than Sean from what he has said since he has returned to YouTube. He has perhaps made some of the most insensitive statements I had ever heard. For example, why is the Holocaust bad? Why the Jews deserve the Holocaust? Why is cancer bad? Attempting to redefine words such as speciation, atheism, objective, and recently morality. E-begging for more money because he doesn't like work, compared the lives of the people who had suffered through the London riots to a freaking bottle of pop, described how a raped woman should marry her rapist because they are connected to one another spiritually. He believes his own family will burn for e an eternal torment for not worshipping Jesus, and he would be willing to kill his own friends and family if he was ever under the illusion of God commanding him to do so. This has only demonstrated how warped his vision of morality is. If he was ever in the position to implement any of these as a leader in an organization or in the position to encourage young people, he would create racist, ethnocentric, dysfunctional, egotistical, antisocial and intellectually backward individuals, wasting and destroying the potential of the next generation. Unfortunately, this is quite evident from the negative influence the likes of Eric and Kent Hovind have had on a collection of people. How they have used emotive, deflective and complicit language by telling their audience what to think rather than how to think. My motive on YouTube is to educate and enhance new perspectives through informative persuasion. As I mentioned previously, my problem is not with individuals being religious, my problem is with people who hijack their religion and use it as an excuse to eliminate the human rights of others and impose their beliefs above and beyond the views of everyone else. I would like to express my distaste of their work by quoting the living dinosaur's response to Wazulu. Oh yes, I did lose sleep over this booby. This and the countless other creationist lies I'm exposed to on an almost daily basis. It might seem like a big joke to you, but to me the world that you and your fellows seek to instantiate is a danger to us all, and more importantly to our children. Children that I've seen you unashamedly lying to while smiling as gleefully as you did here. Wisdom in Nature 7 put this perfectly so I'm not going to dwell on it, but you're playing a dangerous game and shouldn't be surprised if others become infuriated at you when they see the consequences that you're apparently oblivious to. I also take your lies personally because I've a deep and abiding respect for the achievements of those who've hewn the astonishing edifice of our scientific knowledge from the granite of our ignorance. The same individuals whose work, dedication and intellects you spit on with a smile every time you open your mouth. Those achievements that you take for granted and even use to spread your slanders and whose subtle intricacies you have the arrogance to think that you understand and can refute with simple-minded arguments that aren't even fit for the playground. I don't hate you, booby. 
but I hate everything you and your kind stand for. I hate the promotion of ignorance and superstition over knowledge and enlightenment. I hate the arrogance that comes with fools who think that everything is easy because they try nothing that's difficult. I hate the dogmatism of the zealot who thinks that nothing can be understood because they understand nothing. And most of all, I hate the hypocrisy of those who pick gluttonously at the fruits of science and then, like overindulgent brats, refuse to accept the inevitable consequences of the banquet. But you, you seem like an affable chap, Booby, and I don't hate you, just everything you stand for. To finish off as promised, here is the dialogue of our discussion. He kept insisting, morality deals with what we ought to do and not ought not to do. Saying that a behavior affects the world is not justification as to why we ought to care. In fact, in an atheistic worldview, the word ought has no meaning since there is no ultimate standard of right behavior by which to judge what one ought to do or not. I responded by explaining how morals are defined as the standards of conduct that are generally accepted as right or proper, the standards which apply to everyone's physical, intellectual, emotional and social needs are accepted. The standards come as a result of the study of ethics, which outlines the proposed standards and how they affect conduct of a person or group. As I explained to you, the Declaration of Human Rights acts as a perfect example to demonstrate the positive effects from the study of ethics. The reason being is because they acknowledge everyone's physical, intellectual, emotional and social needs. For example, the stand the standard do not kill promotes the value of human life and meets their needs. Feel free to assess all of the standards in order to understand. However, he responds by saying, false. Morality deals with the moral value of given action and presupposes that actions are moral issues to begin with. You first need to establish a worldview that allows for actions to have moral content, which you have failed to do since thinking and act as her moral value is a very different from it actually having a moral value. I can think Peter Parker is Spider-Man that does not make Peter Parker or Spider-Man real. I replied by saying, feel free to check my references from the Oxford English Dictionary who have a team of philologists prepared to explain and justify this particular meaning. I have explained to you consistently how a worldview is a subjective perspective determined by an individual's personal observations and experiences. To govern a society to achieve something is perhaps what you are asking for. I can reference you to the British Humanist Society who can provide you, like I did, to the Declaration of Human Rights, which are indeed a powerful set of standards to govern a society. This was ex explained in my previous message to you. Unfortunately, it seems you didn't listen or perhaps innocently missed it. Constructing and testing moral values impact upon individuals and groups lives demonstrates its requirement. Morals are in, pl are in place to promote accepted values. The secular, mechanisms, the secular mechanisms I have explained are in place today and in all wor first world societies who promote multiculturalism and cooperation to achieve their goals. As long as each goal doesn't harm anyone physically, intellectually, emotionally or socially, then it is accepted. An ultimate goal for every society is to have the resources for survival and for future development. We need a large community of from all ethnicities to, to achieve this goal. The key factor in the equation is, is that you do not need to believe in a god to achieve your goals. You need to believe in humanity's potential to achieve them. The fact that we can see the outcome of said standards impact demonstrates its utility on society, or to put it into your words, it makes Peter Parker Spider-Man. I hope this makes things a bit more clear. Unfortunately, he has not responded to this yet, but I think we can conclude Sean has only demonstrated his ignorance once again by attempting to redefine words to suit him. Perhaps one day he may understand why people still cringe in disbelief. Or perhaps he will maintain his position to become the failure he is doomed to be. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, rate and favorite.